When Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC came out, many people complained that the performance wasn't too good, and there definitely are some areas that can really chug depending on your hardware. So today, I'm going to show you how you can more than double your frame rate. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so before we dive into the game itself, there are a couple of things I want to make sure that we touch on to ensure that you are getting the best experience. One, be sure to update the GPU and chipset drivers for your PC. Now, I will be making guides in the future on how best to install these, but for now, I'll have a link in the description to DDU, which you should run first to uninstall your current drivers if you never have, and all the drivers for NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. So before we proceed, just run DDU, install the latest drivers, and restart your PC. 2. Make sure XMP for Intel or DOCP slash Expo is enabled in your BIOS. Believe it or not, most kits of memory still do not come running at their max speed out of the box, and even system builders can forget to enable it sometimes, or just updating the BIOS can reset this. So please hop into your BIOS, which can usually be accessed by mashing F2 or delete while your PC is starting up, enable it and hit F10 to save and restart. Okay, so we're finally ready to start adjusting game options. You pull up the DLC at max settings and uh-oh, you're only getting 30 FPS. Now, personally, I'm running this game right now on an RTX 3060 with a 14700K using 6400 mega transfer DDR5 at 1440p, but the settings we'll be adjusting today translate to just about any somewhat modern PC. But I digress, the first setting we need to adjust is definitely ray tracing. Now, to be fair, this game does greatly benefit visually from ray tracing. As you can see, enabling it does add a ton of visual depth to the scene by adding shadows mostly to plants and grass that can make the world feel more alive, but unfortunately, it comes at a massive performance penalty. In fact, turning this one setting off alone can nearly double your frame rate. And while there are some small performance differences between the different ray tracing quality settings, even low has an enormous impact. And even on an RTX 4090 system, I found it to be too strenuous in the DLC. So I do recommend disabling it altogether. But if you must have it and you're using a very powerful graphics card, low should be okay as there's very little visual difference between low and max for the ray tracing in this game. But now we need to talk about the regular non-RT settings, because although now we are getting close to the 60 FPS cap, that won't always be the case, and I'm actually running a few mods which will allow me to go beyond the 60 FPS cap. I'll have them linked in the description, but be aware you cannot play online if you mod Elden Ring, or your account could get banned, so please be careful about that. Anywho, moving on to the main settings, I tested every single one out, and there's only three I found which had a noticeable impact on performance and didn't visually harm the image too much. One, shadows. Now, if you lower this too much, it will look bad, but I found going from max to high provided a pretty similar image quality and did allow for a nice roughly 4% increase in FPS, but it could be even more depending on the area. Two, volumetric quality. This one's a big one. While this can have a small impact on image quality when it comes to lighting, making some things look a bit more pixelated when reduced, I found that overall it was mostly unnoticeable and dropping it from max to low nets roughly 25% more performance and on medium around 22% more performance. And then the final setting that I suggest changing is effect quality as simply dropping this from max to higher medium can net anywhere from two to 3% more performance for very little image quality difference. So overall, by disabling ray tracing, turning shadows from max to high, turning volumetric quality to low and effects to medium brought me from around 32 FPS to 77 FPS or a roughly 2.4 times increase in performance and the game still looks great. In fact, comparing the non-RT max settings to my optimized settings, I can barely see any difference in quality in most scenarios anyway, and the FPS increases from roughly 59 to 77 or a 31% increase 
in performance. Now, if it's still not running great, you can always try enabling max performance in the NVIDIA control panel for NVIDIA owners and enabling high performance in Windows, but overall, this should help you get to a much more playable frame rate at nearly the same quality as max. So if you found this guide useful, please be sure to smack the like button, comment below, share the video, and subscribe for more FPS and performance guides. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.